Hi, I'm Ted Coe, former high school and college mathematics teacher and director of mathematics at Achieve. Hi, I'm Maya Daugherty, former high school reading and English teacher and the director of ELA and Literacy for Achieve. We all have our favorite instructional materials and a process for selecting them, but how do we know that we've chosen the best materials to be aligned to the standards? We should think about alignment, instructional focus, necessary supports for teachers and varied learners, and assessment opportunities. Uh, because it's important that the materials that we put in front of our students 100% of the time are of 100% quality in order to be worthy of our students' time and attention. The EQUIP rubric for lessons and units intends to guide teachers and leaders through a conversation that hits on important aspects of instruction and materials to ensure that they are of high quality. This process is intended to be done collectively, though we expect each reviewer to come to the conversation having conducted a review of his or her own. An individual to collective process helps to produce a final product that honors the diverse set of expertise in analysis. In the math rubric, we have four dimensions. The first dimension is about alignment, and it serves as a gateway. We expect that the materials pass this dimension, and if they don't, then the review shouldn't continue. We want to see if the lesson targets content standards and connects the work to the mathematical practices. We also look for a balance of concepts and procedures. After dimension one, we move to dimension two. And in the second dimension, we look for the key shifts, that of focus, coherence, and rigor. In this case, we think of rigor as an appropriate balance of procedural skills and fluencies, concepts, and applications. The third dimension is about supports. We look for clear guidance. Could a first-year teacher pick this up and do right by the mathematics? Is the mathematics accurate and precise? Is the lesson engaging? Does it promote productive struggle? Is it easy to use? Does it support all learners? In longer lessons, we check for a mix of instructional approaches, a gradual removal of supports, and a progression of learning over time. In the fourth dimension, we look at assessment. Does the lesson require students to independently demonstrate meeting the standard? Are there rubrics and guidance? Is there support on interpreting results? And for longer lessons or units, we want to know, are there varied modes of assessment? After looking at all four dimensions, the ratings for each are added together and an overall score is calculated. If the score is 0 to 2, this means the materials are not aligned and does not meet criteria. If the score is between 3 and 7, we say that the materials are aligned partially but need significant revision in one or more dimensions. For a score of 8 to 10, we say that the materials are aligned but need some improvement in one or more of the dimensions. And for a score of 11 or 12, we say the materials are aligned and meet most to all of the criteria in all of the dimensions. After a score is calculated, we talk about next steps. Do we use the materials? Do we modify the materials before using them? And keep in mind the time to conduct a review varies. The length of the unit, the experience of the reviewers, it might take an hour to a few hours. Teams of three to four reviewers are ideal. Additionally, the EQUIP website includes training materials distinguished by grade bands as well as a library of high quality instructional lessons with feedback vetted by nationally recognized peer review panels in math and ELA. All of this is freely available on the EQUIP website under an open license. You might be thinking, what if I don't have the time to conduct a full EQUIP review that may take three to four hours? Well, the good news is we have a shorter version, the task rubric that can be done in an hour and focuses on many of the same elements of high quality.